Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be drawing Lilo and Stitch nails. I absolutely love Lilo and Stitch. It was like my favorite growing up, so I wanted to recreate it on a set of nails. And what better way to do that by using our newest release launch and product on VitaBella.com. If you didn't know, that is my husband and I's baby. We have been working so hard on trying to get these products out on time. It is May 19th, today is release date, so if you are watching this a little bit later, they should already be on our website, so if you guys are interested and wanna support a small business, definitely check us out. We're gonna be releasing our Basic B collection. These are gel polishes, very high in viscosity, extremely pigmented. They're gonna be perfect for nail art, which is what I wanted to do and create. So we're gonna have just red, just orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. It's gonna be our primary colors so it's gonna be nice to have these as your base colors and then you could just mix as you go or if you want to create a custom color along with that we're gonna be releasing our four new nail art brushes I'm the most excited about these because if you didn't know I am very passionate about my brushes and I really do believe that if you have a really good brush you're gonna be able to draw the best nail art you have ever drawn so Definitely check those out. We're gonna have three different liners and then our oopsie brush, which is my favorite because we need to fix our mistakes sometimes, all right? And then lastly, we're gonna be releasing our black and white gel paint. I felt like we needed these in paint forms just for the higher viscosity and just to be able to use those in more detailed areas. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Okay, right into today's video, we're gonna start off by applying our base color. I am going in with the Not Polish Sea Salt Caramel. Their gel polish, it's a little bit on the sheer side, which is totally fine because I love that look, honestly, for a nude base. So we're gonna be doing a thin layer of that, and then I'm actually gonna be going in with a pink color from Profiles Backstage, which I cannot remember the name of it, so I'll leave that link down below as always. But we're going in first with this color. Carrying that in the light for 60 seconds, and then we're gonna be going in with that pink color over top just to make it a little bit more on the pink side, but because they're both a little on the shears end, they will blend nicely and it'll look like if it's just one color. So again, 60 seconds in the light. I am actually using press-on nails. These are my favorite press-on nails ever. They are from Amazon, so I'll leave those linked down below as well. They are extra, extra long and I just love the shape of them and the versatility of being able to trim them down to whatever length you want since they are super, super long. So again, going in with that pink, very thin layer, just going in all over the nail and then curing once again for 60 seconds. Very quickly showing you guys the basic B collection. I'm obsessed with our packaging, so I hope you guys are too. And then we have our white and black gel paint. And a quick little recommendation, just do a little slit or a hole in your silver little liner that comes in your gel paint. It will ultimately help with spillage, so definitely recommend. We're gonna be going in with this brush specifically. This is our short liner. And I'm gonna be using that for pretty much all of the larger areas and details. And then I will be letting you guys know as soon as I switch my brush out to a different one so y'all know exactly which ones I'm using. So we're gonna start off by mixing our just blue color with a little bit of our white liner to create the perfect shade for Stitch's body. Now, my way of doing nail art might be tricky to other people, so I'm gonna take it upon myself to try to mess around with different methods of creating nail art in hopes that I make my life a little bit easier, but also teach you guys different ways and see if I can help y'all achieve a perfect little character. So my process typically goes with me doing the silhouette of whatever character is. So in this instance, we are drawing stitch. So I'm starting off with this head, which is the biggest portion and the hardest one in my opinion to get the perfect shape or the perfect dimension of it. So I figured I would go ahead and start with that and then go on the rest of his body. So because we're using that same blue throughout this silhouette portion, I wanted to just go ahead and draw the little folds of the ears that are going to be that same shade and then the little hair spiking up and now we're gonna go into his body. So my way of doing this was pretty much sketching out or doing the outline of his arms and feet. He's gonna be kind of crouched over so I wanted to make sure that I got the shape right and I'm simply just outlining it with that same blue 
and then we're just gonna infill the entire area. The reason why I'm doing this is not only because I want to get that perfect shape, but the blue is going to hide it perfectly and I already know that I have the right dimensions and proportions for those areas. So when I go into outline, I could just go ahead and outline it very easily. So then I'm gonna be mixing a lighter blue for his inner body and his eyes. His mouth or chin part as well is going to be that blue. So I just simply start outlining and then we start infilling all of that area. Y'all already know I do not like to layer my products on top a lot but for characters like this it just makes a little bit more sense um, I will be testing out just outlining the character and then infilling to see if I like that method better I just suck at the moment with outlining designs so I haven't tried that in a very long time but we're gonna be outlining the little eyes as well it's kind of like a circle but we put a little point right there make it a little bit of like an egg shape and then we're just infilling that area as well. Now, I am so excited, you guys, for this launch. Y'all have no idea how hard it has been to release these, so I am so excited that it is now over and I can share the products with y'all. May 19th, if you're watching this late, they already launched. If you're watching it early, May 19th is the day they are releasing. So we're going to be releasing six different colors. They are formulated very thick but not super thick. So they're gonna be the perfect viscosity for nail art and also for a full cover nail. I wanted to do gel polish, kind of random, I know since I never really used gel polish, but I wanted to formulate something that was going to be super versatile and very functional for any type of nail tech. So whether you're doing a gel manicure or some intricate nail art, I wanted it to be very useful so that you don't have to have a million and one products on hand. So I hope you guys love the products. If you do purchase them, I love you so, so much for supporting us, but we're going in with all the details. So now I have switched to our long liner. This one is gonna help to get all of those tiny little details, which are smaller, but you can also use it for outlining. So I'm gonna be using that same brush for all of the outlined areas that I'm doing. Y'all can see how easily I am creating those super thin lines because these brushes are extremely pointy at the end. So you can create super, super thin lines as long as you have a very minimal amount of product on your brush, you should be able to get that. Remember, the smaller amount you have on your brush, the skinnier the lines will be. Also, the amount of pressure you are applying, the more product you have on your brush, the thicker and the harder you press when you're drawing, the thicker the line will be as well. So I'm just gonna be using that same brush to outline all of Stitch. And then I'm gonna be adding some little like wrinkles under the eyes and pretty much just adding in all those tiny little hard to do details using our black gel liner. Now we're switching over to our micro detail brush, which is gonna be perfect for those tiny, tiny little details like these eyeballs. And then we are switching back to our short liner to draw Lilo. We are starting off with her face. So I didn't do that pink shade on the ring finger because I thought I was gonna use the base color as her skin tone, but I was struggling. I literally was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of a darker shade and all I did was added a darker brown to her skin tone, mixed it up so you can see the very slight minimal shade difference in my base and her face or her skin. 
So again, I'm gonna be starting off with her face, trying to get those dimensions perfectly. We outline and then we infill and then I'm doing her ear. And then we're gonna be doing her neck as well. Then I decided to go in with black for her hair. I figured this would help me a little bit as well, kind of just guide myself to get the bigger picture or the rest of the character. So we're starting off with the little creases in her hair, which is her bangs. And then I'm going to outline around her ear. And then I'm gonna be doing the top of her head and then just infilling all of that area with the black. Again, I'm using the gel liner in black and our short brush. Now do note that these are double-ended, duo-sided, so I'm not quite sure which one I'm using of the brushes, but you guys can definitely get a little bit more comfortable with them if y'all purchase them. So I'm gonna just tell you what brush I'm using and then we'll go from there. I went ahead and infilled all of her top portion of her hair and I'm gonna go ahead and quickly outline her face. And then we're gonna start outlining her dress her sleeves and her little arms and stuff like that. And then we'll go in with all of the little details. I'm going in very carefully, holding my breath during the entire process. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're wiping off the excess paint. I always like to drag it on the side across whatever surface I'm using for my gel paint. And that helps minimize the amount, but also distribute it throughout the entire brush. And that way you have the perfect amount for these tiny little thin lines that you can see me doing. So if I want a thicker line, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing a more of a harsh, press when I am drawing and if I want thinner, I'm gonna barely glide that on there. Now here I'm using my oopsie brush. This is my favorite thing ever. I'm using a little bit of alcohol to remove that line that I did. I definitely thought that I would go ahead and do that and then quickly regretted it. I feel like faces are the hardest to achieve in my opinion. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it for the end. I was not ready who fails. So I went ahead and switched back to my short liner and we're gonna be going in and infilling using just red from our gel polishes. We're gonna be doing the entire base of her dress, which is just red. And then we're gonna be going in and adding the little leaves that go on her dress as the print, but base first, just infilling that very carefully. You can grab a bunch of that and infill it a lot quicker. I just get scared for it to drip off. So now I'm gonna be going in her face. I grabbed a little bit of courage and I knew that I needed to go for it. So we're gonna start off with her nose, which are super terrifying to do. Noses, faces, eyes, mouths just scare me. I feel like you could very much so mess it up very quickly <laughs> if you don't have the proportions correctly. Like for example, whenever I finished doing this nail art, I definitely thought her eyes could have been a lot bigger. Um, and then, I don't know, just the, the face was a lot thinner than I would have wanted it to be, but she still came out super, super cute. So I'm doing the outline of all of her face features, and then we're gonna be doing the color blocking portion of it. So always remember to cure. I know I haven't been telling you guys when I'm curing, but I pretty much cure in between layers. And then I added a little bit more white to the red to create the mouth part. And then of course, for a lighter pink, I added way more white. So we did the tongue as well. We are doing brown eyes, so I'm pretty much going in. And then using my micro detail brush, you can see it's super, super tiny. I'm gonna be going in also for the pupils and outlining or adding the details to her mouth. And now comes the leaves on her dress. I'm using our white liner. It's a lot thicker in viscosity, so do note that. I feel like white and black were a must in liners because you just need that nice thick viscosity for other little details that aren't gonna be like super full coverage. 
I'm going in, I'm doing an outline, and then we are pretty much just doing the little leaf details. Outlining, infilling, outlining, infilling was kind of the process that I took for that. Next, I'm gonna be going back in with our long liner and infilling the rest of her hair. Her hair is long, so we're gonna be bringing that all the way down on both sides, and I'm carefully just outlining and then infilling pretty much like the rest of that area between her neck and her hair. And then the same on the other side. Make sure you are using this very, very thin, otherwise it'll be hard to cure. So since it's super, super, very, very pigmented, you wanna make sure you use thin layers of those gel paints. And now I'm gonna be going back in with our red and just doing a Frenchie for the rest of the nails. So I start with the outline. Then I'm gonna be taking the brush that comes with the gel polish and just applying that on the rest of the nail. It just makes it a lot quicker. Just be careful not messing up your smile line. Curing that in the light, I'm taking just green and a little bit of white and we're gonna be doing different tones of leaves for our little accent nails. So I'm doing different ones, different shades, just to kind of make it a little bit more fun. And I'm gonna be showing that on the pinky as well. Always, always, always cure in between layers. Make sure that they don't bleed into each other. And as a little bonus, I figured I would break down the process of doing the leaf that is on her dress. Just make it a little bit easier for you to understand if you struggle just the way that I do. So we're doing two leaves, making them connect at the center. And then I'm doing that like negative space where the red is. And then we're gonna be doing the leaves slightly slanted. And then you infill that and you repeat until the center one turns into a point. And I'll just let you guys watch that. Um, a little bit easier to figure out once you get this process going and definitely a lot less complicated than I made it seem on the other nails. Going in with my top coat, this is the Glosset Top Coat from Not Polish. Adding that to all of the nails, making sure that I'm really pressing that into the nail art. We don't want any of that nail art exposed. We want to fully cover it. It also helps give like a really, really smooth finished look. So definitely recommend really going in with your top coat. We're going to be placing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, no, 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 no.